Alrighty then, so section 2.2, um, looking at the sine and cosine. You know, because all if all if all we ever do is look at power functions and constant multiples and so forth, we aren't going to get very far. So um, let's toss in the trig functions of sine and cosine, and um, here the the derivative of sine of x with respect to x is cosine of x. Okay, so get that right. Uh, uh, you know, I mean the derivative of sine is the cosine. Now, we'll see why you can get it wrong. Um, you know, because you think, well, hey, that's great. You know, that's fantastic. You know, sine and cosine, just swap them out. Uh, but the derivative of the cosine of x with respect to x, unfortunately, is the negative of the sine function. And that's where people screw up, is forgetting which one makes the negative, which one makes the positive. And, you know, so that just takes practice, and you keep working at it, and even then you can, you can screw it up. I mean, you know, it does happen. Um, but those are the derivatives, and, and sort of that's the end of the story, right? I mean, there, there you go. Those are the derivatives. And, um, you know, all you could really, you know, uh, all we can do at this point is, well, if I had like f of x equals, you know, 3x minus uh, 2 cosine x, well, then if I want to look at f prime of x, right, that's the derivative of 3x with respect to x minus the derivative of 2 cosine x with respect to x. Um, but now, you know, that's 3 times the derivative of x with respect to x. Uh, and then minus 2 times the derivative of cosine x with respect to x. And so there's 3 because we get 1 from the uh, derivative of x. Now, again, remember, this is just the slope of the tangent line. You know, with this 3x up here, I just I knew the derivative was 3, because it's, it's a linear function. You know, 3x, its slope is 3. So, I knew that was 3, but I, I went through the, the stuff here. Um, then, minus 2 times derivative of cosine is minus sine of x, and so this is 3 plus 2 sine of x. Now actually, um, to show this uh, requires a, a bit of work. Um, you can look up proofs for the, the one limit that comes into play, but you know, let's look at the derivative of the sine of x with respect to x. Well, that's the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Now, you know, what you can do is um, you can use uh, tr a trig identity and so you'd say limit as h goes to zero. Now, sine of x plus h or sine of a plus b, you know, the sum of two angles can be written as the sine of x, cosine of h, and then uh, plus the cosine of x, sine of h, and then minus sine x, all divided by h. Okay, so uh, we have that, and um, you know, as we look at that, we see I've got this one part that I can I can put the first term here and the last term together. I have the limit as h goes to zero of uh, sine of x times cosine h minus one divided by h and then plus cosine of x sine h over h. Well, so 
here's where it gets hard is um, uh, let's see did I yeah sine of h just looking to make sure I've got everything yeah so oops cosine that's I thought something looked funny there uh, okay so here I can split this up as the two the sum of the two limits right and so I'd be looking here at, at this now sine of x it, nothing happens with that so I'm just worried about what's cosine h minus uh, 1 and similarly uh, over h what happens as h goes to 0 there and then sine h over h what happens as that goes to 0 well this one goes to 0 and so 0 times sine x you get 0 this one goes to 1 and so 1 times cosine x you get cosine x. Um, now the thing is, you know, it it's kind of complicated to see those. There there are some various proofs of it. Um, we're not. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, it is a nice limit to know that sine h over h is is one. They're very similar, and uh, again, you can kind of see that just in that if you you know look at the graph well that was a terrible graph um, and I think I've mentioned this before but you look at the graph and there's y equal x and there's y equals sine of x oops sine of x then as you look at that graph um, it does appear that the these this line here is the tangent line near zero sine of zero and and so if you zoom in very closely they start to look like exactly the same function the same straight line so it seems reasonable that a, as you looked at that that would be very close to a one okay uh, but again I, I'm not worried about that okay we're not going to go into that proof we're just going to say yep we believe it sine of h over h as h goes to 0 goes to 1 and cosine of h uh, minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 goes to 0 we're going to believe them both okay and so what that gives us then are our new two rules and at this point we could combine with sums and differences and multiply by constants and we know how to do that then okay so those are all our rules from section 2.2.